There are many rules that help loosely define the economy that we are involved in today. Many of them are based around the laws of supply and demand. The law of supply is the principle that, all else equal, an increase in the price of a given product will also increase the quantity of it supplied. It also states that, all else equal, a decrease in the price of a given product will decrease quantity of the item supplied. The law of demand is the principle that, all else equal, an increase in the product's price will reduce the quantity of it demanded. Also, all else equal, a decrease in the product's price will increase the quantity of it demanded. These laws of supply and demand can be applied to many things in the economy of our country. This graph illustrates supply. It moves along this line based on changes in price which affect quantity supplied. The supply curve will only move left or right based on a set of rules known as determinants. The determinants of supply include number of producers, government policy, prices of resources including labor, land, machines, and other factors of production, and technology. Demand also has its own individual set of determinants. The demand determinants are number of consumers, consumer taste slash preferences, prices of related goods including complementary and substitute goods, consumer incomes, and changes in consumer expectations. These determinants will cause shifts in the graph. A shift from D1 to D2, which is an increase, could be caused by any of the demand determinants, including a change in consumer tastes. For example, if Furbies suddenly came back in style, the curve would shift to the right to an increased consumer demand for them. The curve would move from D1 to D3 if any of the other demand determinants changed. For instance, if Oral-B started producing the same whitening toothpaste that Crest had been for years, the demand for Crest products would most likely shift to the left and therefore decrease because of the substitute good determinant. If a person's average salary decreased, they would no longer desire as many luxury goods and the demand curve would shift to the left for these due to change in consumer income. There is a similar graph involved for supply. The supply curve would shift from S1 to S2 depending on the determinants already mentioned. For instance, if 500 new firms started producing the same good that two firms had been producing beforehand, there would be an increase in supply from S1 to S2. Similarly, the graph could shift from S1 to S3 if any of the determinants changed in a certain way. For instance, if the price of resources increased to make brass rings, then the supply curve would shift to the left as it would make it more expensive for a firm to produce these brass rings. If new technology emerged to make cake cheaper, then supply would shift to the right due to the uh, change in technology determinant. A change from point A to point B would occur if the price was raised, which would also increase the quantity supplied. Elasticity of demand. When demand is elastic, consumers are more responsive to changes in price. Once again, certain determinants will affect demand elasticity. These include substitutability. The larger the number of substitute goods available, the greater the price elasticity of demand. For example, car tires, in general, do not have a substitute and consumers will purchase them if price goes up. However, there are many replacements for Campbell's soup available, so if the price of it goes up, consumers are less likely to still purchase the product. Proportion of income. The higher the price of a good relative to consumers' income, the greater the price elasticity of demand. For example, if a large ticket item like a motorcycle has a change in price of 10%, the price may go up or down $2,500. Well, if a 10% rise in candles occurred, the price difference would be mere pennies. Luxury versus necessities. The more a product or service is considered to be a luxury rather than a necessity, the greater the price elasticity of demand. For example, something considered to be a necessity by consumers like gasoline will have less of a response to a change in price. Ice cream, on the other hand, can be foregone because it is a luxury and not necessary to survive for most people. Time. Product demand is more elastic when the time period under consideration is longer. Consumers need time to adjust to changes in price. They will not just immediately stop buying a product when the prices get too high. For example, if the price of guns rises by 75%, people may not immediately stop buying guns, but over time people may consider using crossbows or swords instead. Another term important to understanding elasticity is inelasticity. When a product has inelastic demand, consumers are less responsive to changes in price. Elasticity of supply. Elasticity of supply depends on how easily and quickly producers can shift resources between alternative uses. A greater elasticity factor for supply will occur depending on how easily and rapidly producers can shift resources between alternative uses. The longer the time, the greater the resource shiftability and the greater the elasticity. The market period. The market period is a period that occurs in the time immediately after a change in market price is too short for producers to respond with a change in quantity supplied. For example, the price of plasma TVs has suddenly gotten below the price of projection TVs. The time it takes for the projection TVs to get below the price of plasma TVs will take a certain amount of time, which is a market period. 
short run. A short run is a time too short to change plant capacity, but long enough to use a fixed plant more or less intensively. For example, a factory needs to create a larger supply of widgets. There is not enough time to create new technology at the moment. The factory owner decides to have his workers work an extra three hours to increase production and meet the new demand. Long run. A long run is a time period long enough for firms to adjust their plant sizes and for new firms to enter or existing firms to leave the industry. For example, the same widget factory needs to produce more widgets so they expand their factory by buying additional equipment. This will take a longer amount of time and create more product than in the previous example to meet a much higher demand. Price ceilings. An aspect of controlled economics, a price ceiling is set by a government to set the maximum legal price that a seller may charge for a product or service. The rationale for establishing price ceilings on certain products is that they enable consumers to obtain some essential good or service that they cannot afford at equilibrium price. A good example of price ceilings can actually be found in coffin sales. The baby boomer generations are starting to die, causing the demand for coffins to rise. The determinant in this rise of the demand is due to more consumers in the market for coffins. Setting a price ceiling on coffins helps to make them more affordable for anybody who needs one. This graph shows that the quantity demanded increases and the quantity supply decreases because of the price ceiling. A shortage occurs because supply decreases and demand increases at the new, lower price. This results in not enough product to meet the demand of the price ceiling. To eliminate a shortage, people will usually find ways to use less of a product. Another aspect of a semi-controlled economy is the price floor. A price floor is a minimum price fixed by a country's government. Price floors above equilibrium prices are usually invoked when society feels that the market system is not provided a sufficient income for certain groups of resource suppliers or producers. An example can be found in strawberries. If the equilibrium price of a pack of strawberries is $2.50 and strawberry growers are not at a good standard of living or are losing money, the government may intercede and set a price floor. In this example, the government approves a price raise of $1.50, setting the price of a pack of strawberries at $4. This will decrease the demand for strawberries, which consumers will substitute with another, cheaper fruit. The amount of strawberries produced would increase due to the higher potential profits. This will eventually create a surplus of strawberries. To eliminate a surplus, the government may buy some of the amount of the excess product produced to offset any loss the producer experiences. They might also find other uses of the product to expand the market for it. A perfectly inelastic demand occurs and a price change results in no change whatsoever in the quantity demanded. This also means that the price elasticity coefficient is zero because there is no response to a change in price. A situation where there would be perfectly inelastic demand could occur in a person with obsessive compulsive disorder. If they have OCD and must clean windows all the time, they would buy Windex no matter what the price of it. This causes the demand to be perfectly inelastic. Perfectly elastic demand occurs when a minor price reduction causes buyers to increase their purchases from zero to all they can obtain. This also makes the elasticity coefficient infinite. An example of perfectly elastic demand could be seen with a new iPod model during Christmas season. If this model were increased in price by, say, $10, perfectly elastic demand may occur. This would happen because this small price change as well as the already large consumer demand for the product would set it apart from other products, which are all assumed to have a higher price in this example. This would make the demands for iPods at that point infinite.